God love you so much. You are the man men chosen people. Today, Leo, the message title Conquering the City of Jericho. Monday, I will join Leo to take him to Jericho. After conquering the city of Jericho, Monday, I will take him to Jericho. Next, our Lord God wants Israelites conquer land of Canaan. The boys will take him to Canaan. Step by step, we will fight hard to win. Hard to win. Pua na si pue. First, thank God. Kwanza namshukuru Mungu. Thank Jesus Christ. Namshukuru Yesu Kristo. Thank God for sending men of God, Bishop Jerome, in this world through his prayer, through his love, we can understand the Bible. Namshukuru Mungu amenua na kutuma mtumishi wake Daktari Jerokli kupitia mafundisho yake, tumemwelewa Mungu na tukaelewa mapenzi yake ndani ya Biblia. Because of Bishop J, our shepherd prayer and the love I could understand the Bible. I can preach the message on the pulpit after learning from him. Kutokana na mafundisho na upendo wa mchungaji wetu Daktari Jerokli, nimewezeshwa leo hii niko na uwezo wa kuwafunza neno la Mungu kwa sababu nimesoma kwake. So when I met any person, nikipatana na yeyote without introducing my spirit father Bishop Jerokli, I Never talk anything. So every Sunday, every service, every service, every service, every service, we talk about my bishop shepherd because him I can stand on the pulpit, keep the message. Then I can keep the message to you. Katika kila ibada na maubiri kwanza ni kumshukuru Mungu nilipata na naskofu Daktari Jerokli nikasikiza kwake na leo hii niko na cha kuwafundisha. Thank you for all of you coming today and also I pray for the Ongata Rongai they are coming many of them they want to come to headquarters so that Kitengala Prince Saint Peter Church member Louis Saint Peter Church member those who are watching YouTube through a uh, Service, then all those who are watching this uh, service through YouTube, be blessed the Lord from the Lord God. Na washukuru wote ambao mefika katika ibada hii na pia washiriki wetu wa ungata rungai wengi wengi wa kujienu wa nakuja. Na pia wanabao natufata kupitia YouTube moja kwa moja kwenye ibada hii kutoka kitengela na ruiru na pali penginepo mweze kupokea mneema kupitia ibada hii. I want to review kidogo message last Sunday. Hebu nifanya marudio kiasi tu kuhusu jumbe wa jumapili liopita. After the Jesus Moses God raised Jehoshua as the leader of the Israelite. Bada ya kifo cha Musa, Mungu alimunua, alimunua Yoshua kama kiongozi wa wa Israeli. The second generation of the Israelite began their honest march toward Canaan led by Jehoshua. Na wa kiongozi wa na Yoshua, kizazi chapili cha Israeli, walianza kukanza muendo kwelekea nchi ya Canaan. For the Israelites to enter Canaan, they first needed to conquer the city of Jericho. Nandiyo kwamba wa Israeli waweze kufuka na kufika kwenye nchi ya Canaan ili wabidi kwanza wavuke nchi ya nchi wa Jericho na kisha wa uteke. To do so, they first had to cross the flooded Jordan River lying ahead of them. Nandiyo kwamba wateke mji wa Jericho ili wabidi waweze kufuka mto wa Jordan ya mbao likuwa umefurika mbele ya. When the river flooded and the current was low, wakati mto ulifurika na mwendo wake ulikuwa wa kasi sana, it was not easy for millions of people to cross while carrying heavy loads. Hai kwa raisi kwa mamilioni ya watu wavuke mto huu wakibeba mizigo mizito. But at this time, lakini wakati huo, the Lord God presented a very simple way for the Israelites. Kristo Jordan River. Bwana Mungu aliwapa njia moja rahisi wa Israeli kuvuka mto wa Jordan. God's way was to have the priest have who carried the ark of God's covenant walk into the flooded Jordan River. Na njia hiyo rahisi ya Mungu ilikuwa ni kuwafanya makuhani ambao walibeba sanduku ya agano la Bwana wavuke mto huu uliofurika wa Jordan. God said that if they did so, the water from upstream would stop flowing and fire up 
in one heap na Mungu akasema ya kwamba makuhani wakafanya vile basi maji mtiririko wa maji utakwama na utajikusanyisha kuwa mlima mmoja mkubwa wisa our common sense na kwa fikra zetu za kikawaida it is impossible to make a river with a strong current stop flowing just by stepping into it haiko jambo la kuwezekana ati kwa kukanyaga tu maji ya mtu uliyofurika ati mtiririko wa maji ukwame however hata hivyo because they had the experience to splitting of the big red sea to israelite believe that making that overflowing river stop shouldn't be a problem at all kwa sababu hawa wa israeli walikuwa wameshashuhudia bahari ya shamu ile kubwa imegawanyika kuwili kwa nguvu za Mungu waliamini ya kwamba kusimamisha mtiririko wa mto huu uliofurika haukuwa jambo la kuwasumbua according to God's word delivered by Joshua the priest obeyed immediately and stepped into the flowing water carrying the ark of the lord na kulingana na agano ama kulingana na amri ya mungu kuelekea yoshua basi wale makuhani walitii mara moja na kisha wakakanyaga maji ya mto ule wakibeba sanduku la agano la bwana as soon as the priest feet were dipped in the water the flow of the overflowing children river stopped by God's almighty power. Na punde tu makuhani walipokanyaga miguu yao kwenye mto ule basi mtiririko wa maji ulikwama na kwa nguvu za Mungu wote wakaweza kuvuka. And all of them crossed it as if they were walking through dry land. Na wote wakavuka kana kwamba wanatembea kwenye nchi ambayo haina maji, nchi kavu. The confidence among Israelites was boosted. Na ile ujasiri kati ya Waisraeli ukaweza kuongezeka. And they felt like they could take over Jericho at that very moment. Na wakaisi kana kwamba wako na uwezo wa kuweza kuteka mji wa Jericho wakati huo huo. Yet, hata hivyo, instead of ordering them to attack Jericho, God commanded them to do something else. Badala ya kuamrisha Waisraeli waweze kushambulia mji wa Jericho, Mungu aliwaagiza jambo lingine tofauti. It was to circumcise themselves. Aliwaagiza kwamba wafanye tohara. With a human thought. Kwa fikra za kibinadamu. People they were about to have a big battle. They should have been ordered to check their weapon or prepare themselves well. Ni kawaida kwamba kwa sababu vita vilikuwa mbele yao ilibidi waagizwe jinsi ya kujitayarisha silaha zao ndio kwamba waweze kupigana vita hivi but why did god command them circumcision lakini mbona mungu akawaagiza wafanye tohara it was shown to show them how to win spiritual battle by faith lengo la mungu ilikuwa ni kuwaonyesha jinsi ya kupata ushindi wa vita vya kiroho kwa imani it was also to remind them that in order to see God's work circumcision of their heart that is spiritual sanctification is necessary na tena ilikuwa ni kuwakumbusha kwamba ndio kwamba waweze kuona kazi za mungu za ushindi inabidi wafanye tohara ya moyo yani kutakasika kiroho yes This was not just a message for Israel but it carries the secret to receiving blessing in our family work places and business and giving glory to God. Na ujumbe huu haukuwa ni ujumbe tu kwa taifa la Israeli lakini imebeba siri za baraka katika family zetu, kazini kwetu, biashara zetu na katika namna zote za kumtukuza Bwana Mungu. So You can understand I can understand even though learn a shop in the market in the road you have to cheat customer prepare goods to sell them then customer want to come to your shop again and again ah cheap and cool things they welcome me and then smile then customer talk together Let's go to this shop. They sell good things. They do not cheat us. Only when you do selling something in a light way according to will of God, God will bless your shop to be prosperous. Na maratina tukumbuke na ningependa mujue na vile mnajua 
kama uko na biashara ama duka barabarani ama sokoni pale popote pale unapofanya biashara yako kwa usafi pasipo kudanganya wateja na kuwapa vitu vya bei nafuu na hata vitu vizuri wateja watakupenda watapenda kurudi pale tena na tena watatangazia wengine ya kwamba kuna duka moja iko na vitu vya bei nafuu vitu mzuri na kisha biashara yako itafanikiwa zaidi when you sell one kusu to get interest then the customer came to know he she will never come to your shop ukauza bida fulani ukilenga tu kupata faida yako kwa wingi yule mteja atajua na kisha hatarudi pale they will tell other people watambie watu wengine never to go to the shop usiwahi enda kwenye duka hili people wanadanganya watu haleluya but people lakini watu cheat wanadanganya to get one shilling 50 shilling to get interest apokee faida angalau ya shilingi 50 ama 100 zaidi to be holy kuwa mtakatifu to be honest kuwa mwenye kweli from your heart kwa moyo wako wote as a owner of the shop kama mfanyikazi kwenye duka lako then god will bless you na kisha mungu atakubariki this blessing given to you barikiwa Then why did God command the circumcision in such a critical situation where they were having a battle? Na kwa nini Mungu katika hali hii ya dharura vita viko mbele yao mbona kawaagiza wafanye tohara? It was to teach it not only Israelite but also us today how to win victory in a spiritual battle. Ilikuwa ni funzo si tu kwa Waisraeli lakini hata sisi siku hizi ya kwamba tutajua aji kushinda vita vya kiroho new commerce wageni you know today spiritual battle ujue leo vita vya kiroho not physical battle si vita vya kimwili then we can be successful how to lead a victorious life ndio tutafanikiwa tuishi maisha ya ushindi kila wakati the bible says in epician chapter 6 verse 12 biblia inataja kwenye kwenye waefeso 6:12 our struggle is not against flesh and blood but against the rulers against the powers against the world forces of this dark nicks against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly places kwa maana kushindana kwetu si juu ya nyama na damu bali dhidi ya falme mamlaka dhidi ya wakuu wa giza na majeshi ya pepo wabaya katika ulimwengu wa roho from a physical perspective katika mtazamo wa kimwili kidunia the conquering of Canaan must have been seen as a battle between different peoples vita vya kuteka nchi ya Canaan kwa mtazamo wa kimwili inaonekana kana kwamba ni vita kati ya watu tofauti wa kimwili but actually they were spiritual battle between good spirit helping God's people and evil spirit trying to this ono god lakini ukweli ni kwamba ilikuwa ni vita kati ya roho wazuri wa Mungu ambao wanasaidia watu wa Mungu na roho wachafu ambao wanajaribu kumkosea Mungu heshima battles in the spiritual realm determine the outcome of physical battles na ujue ya kwamba matokeo ya vita vya kiroho ndio inaamua matokeo ya vita vya kimwili this was the case when david defeated the big palestine warrior goliath na hiyo ndio ilikuwa hali wakati daudi alimshinda mfilisti mkubwa jitu aitwaye goliath the bible says in first samuel chapter 7 verse 14 ukaangalia 47 ukaangalia samueli wa kwanza sura ya 17 47 biblia inasema all this assembly may know that the lord does not deliver by sword or by spear for the better is the lord's and he will give you into our hand wale watu wote waliokusanyika hapa watajua kuwa bwana haokoi kwa upanga wala kwa mkuki kwa kuwa vita ni vya bwana naye atawatia wote mikononi mwetu this little boy david huyu kijana mdogo daudi was no match with goliath in terms of height and strength hangeza kulinganishwa na goliath kama ni kimo cha urefu ama nguvu suppose they fought with physical strength and techniques na tuseme kama wangepi 
kupigana kwa nguvu za kimwili na mbinu za Even kimwili Even though there had been 10 20 or dozen of David they couldn't have beaten a single Goliath Ingekuwa ni vita vya kimwili hata kama wangekuwa madaudi 10 ama 20 ama zaidi hawangeza kumshinda huyu Goliath Goliath was a mighty man with a spear and a sword Goliath alikuwa jitu kubwa ambaye alikuwa amejiami kwa mkuki na upanga. He was fully armed with a shield or helmet and an armor. Alikuwa amejiami vizuri kwa ngao, kofia ya chuma na hata silaha zote. With a human sword, how could a strike from this little boy who to such a heavily armed man Goliath? Na kwa mawazo ya kibinadamu inawezekanaje kwamba kijana huyu mdogo kwa kurusha tu jiwe aweze kuangusha jitu kubwa But as a man proper people God David won the spiritual battle. Lakini kwa sababu Daudi alikuwa mwenye haki machoni pa Mungu alishinda vita hivi vya kiroho. David Daudi just used sling and one stone. Alitumia tu jiwe na kamba moja tu. Goliath. Goliath. I'm the whistle all his body. Aliza kujiami mwili wote. Only helmet na kuna kofia ya chuma and only there is a face appeared ni uso tu ndio lionekana pekee when david threw this stone with Waka a sling ti daudi alitupa jiwe who control this stone nani alielekeza jiwe now sasa this stone hili ni jiwe david strong daudi akatupa ikakuja who control nani alikuwa na control angel malaika angel malaika ndio angel aka control control stone na ikakuja touch the head of gonga this is a battle ni vita spiritual battle ya kiroho god control everything mungu ana control kila kitu haleluya amen even though here hata hapa my angel is the right hand now malaika wangu mkono wangu wa kuume my angel very very big ni mkubwa mkubwa sana also one angel beside you na malaika mmoja kwa kando yako wherever you go popote wendapo your angel follow malaika nakufuata when you drive a car ukiendesha gari angel follow malaika nakufuata then why did you meet custom na mbona upate ajali because you do not obey usipoti come to sin unazini still other people na unaiba choose other people na unahukumu get money watu. unatafuta pesa Then your angel cannot protect you. Malaika wako hatokulinda. Do you not obey God's word? Kwa sababu kutima neno ya Mungu. Do not keep regulation. Haukufuata masharti yake. But when you obey, lakini ukitii, do not cheat other people. Usidanganye watu. Usizini. Your angel can protect you from any car accident, any sickness, everything. Kila kitu. Haleluya. So that I give testimony. Ponikato shuda. Even though men of God. Hata mtumishi wa Mungu. Sometimes test. Wakati mwingine anapitia mtihani. Even though God test Abraham. Mungu alipima Abraham how to offer his only son Isaac. Sacrifice your son Isaac as a burnt offering. Akampima aji atamtoa mwana wake wa kipekee saka kama sadaka ya kuteketezwa. Abraham had no son. Na Mungu alijua. Epto 100 years old baada ya kuwa miaka 100 all the son to the abram alimpa abram kijana if you read change chapter 20 to verse 1 ukasoma mwanzo 22 mstari wa 1 the lord god tested abraham bwana mungu akampima abraham even though god know abram obeyed hata mungu alijua abraham atatested lakini akampima perfectly obey or not apime atatiki kamilifu au sivyo sacrifice your son as a burnt offering mtoe mwanao kama sadaka ya kuteketeza mara moja akatii on the mountain akamchukua mwana wake mlimani through his wood akatoa panga wake try kill him akajaribu kumuua angel of malaika katokeza abraham abraham, abraham, abraham. stop to kill you acha kumuua mwana now i know you Sasa obey god's word natima neno ya mungu karibia hapo God want to be like this. Mungu anataka tutii namna hiyo. Me too. Hata mimi. Test me many many times. Nimepimwa mara mingi mingi. One day. Siku moja. So great fever. Fever kubwa ile nikujia. Cannot move. Sikuweza kutembea. At a time Friday or like so. Ilikuwa ni baada ya Ijumaa kesho. My missionary pastor please uh, 
take rest at home. Missionary na wachungaji wa kanisa uri tafadhali askofu pumzika nyumbani. I never miss any service from my life. Lakini maisha ni sijawahi kosa ibada hata moja. Play meeting in the morning. Hata maombi asubuhi. Play in the evening. Maombi jioni. Wednesday service. Wednesday service. Friday all night. Sunday morning. Sunday morning. Jumapili asubuhi. Never miss any service. Sijawahi kosa ibada yoyote. Even though I die. Hata nikifa. I will go to church. Nitenda kanisani. Cannot raise my head. Siku hizi kunyosha tatizo. Ilikuwa ni kichwa na uma sana. Silent. Na kunywa mavu tu. Delta. Nikapiga magoti hapa. Continue pray. Ikaendelea kuomba. When the time come preach the word of God. Wakati wa kuhubiri ukaja. Because of headache. Kwa sababu ya kichwa kuuma. Nevertheless. Isitoshe. Trust God. Nikamini Mungu. When I stop. Wakati nilisimama. From my chair. Kwenye kiti. When I stood on the pulpit. Nikasimama kwenye madhabahu. Start to give the message. Nikaanza kuhubiri. People went away. Then I preach it powerfully. Nikaubiri kwa nguvu zaidi. Continually. Na kwa kuzidi. More power given to me. Nguvu zika kuja tu, zika kuja tu. God want to you. Mungu anataka wewe. Have this good feeling. Uwe na imani mzuri kama hiyo. This blessing given to you today. Na ubarikiwe siku ya leo. In the time of Moses, Israel battled the wisdom. Na wakati wa Musa wa Israeli walipigana na wa Ameleki. As written in Exodus chapter 17. Kama vile imeandikwa kwenye sura ya 17 ya kitabu cha kutoka. When Moses played with his hand up. Wakati Musa aliomba akinua mikono yake juu. Israel won. Israel walishinda vita. And when he got tired and rolled his hand, the situation reversed and the Amalekite won. Lakini wakati alichoka akashusha mikono yake chini, hali iliweza kubadilika na Wamaleki wakashinda vita. Realizing this Aaron and her took a stone had Moses sit on it and held his hand up on both sides. Na wakati Haruni na Huru walitambua hili, walichukua jiwe wakamketisha Musa na kisha wakainua mikono yake yote juu. So until Joshua defeated Amalek and gained victory with the people Moses arm was not lowered. Na mbaka wakati Yoshua aliza kushinda wa Maleki na keza kupata ushindi kwa watu wake mkono wa Musa hau kushushua. Eventually the battle result in Israel's victory. Na mwisho mwisho ushindi ulielekea Israeli. The secret of their victory was Moses' prayer. Na siri ya ushindi wao ilikuwa ni maombi ya Musa. Hallelujah. How could I victory in Africa? I believe that my bishop pray for me for Africa continually. I can pray, I can obey words, I can have a victory by the grace of God. Nimekuwa nikiamini ya kwamba nikipigana vita vya kiroo huku, askofa na niombia na kupitia mombi yake na pata ushindi kila wakati. Anytime God bless me. Na kila wakati na barikiwa. Not me. Si mimi. After meeting a man of God. Kupata mtumishi wa Mungu. Through his prayer. Kupitia mombi yake peke yake na upendo wake. I can lead a victorious life. Nikaishi ushindi kila wakati. Man men family. Jamia man men. To meet a man of God is great to bless. Kupata mtumishi wa Mungu ni baraka kubwa. Haleluya. When Moses played heavenly angel and host of God strengthens to fight, but when Moses didn't play, they lost strength. Wakati Musa alikuwa kiyomba, basi majeshi na maleka wabinguni walipokea nguvu za kupigana vita, lakini wakati Musa hakuomba, wale majeshi na maleka wakapote za nguvu. Other than these two instant in many parts of the Bible, we find record saying that the outcome of physical battle is determined not by flesh and blood, but by the spiritual battle. Kando na matukio haya mawili ambayo nimekwelezea na zingine ambazo kwa kwenye Biblia pande mingi, tunapata rekodi ambazo na tutambulisha ya kwamba vita vya kimwili havia muliwi na damu ama mwili, lakini na muliwa na vita vya kiroo. So that if you receive Jesus as personal savior, our Lord God sent one angel to to be with you. Uju kipoke Yesu kama mkombozu mokoka utu ujue munga na kutumia maleka moja awe na wewe. Also in this Eo, na hapa hewani evil spirit kuna rowachafu and angel na kuna malaika they are fighting together wanapigana vita 
evil spirit roa chafu when you sleep tonight ukilala usiku can you sleep alone utalala peke yako kweli you need a woman so unahitaji mwanamke wewe you can enjoy unaweza furahia maisha who bring this out to you nani anakuletea mawazo kama hayo evil spirit adui roa chafu but holy spirit lakini roho mtakatifu no hapana If you meet a woman sleep ukipata na mwanamke ni totally. kuzini so in your heart moyo ni wako can i sleep with one woman nitafute mwanamke to not to sleep with woman ama nisimtafute there are fighting kuna kwa na vita spiritual ni mambo ya kiroho evil spirit god angel fighting in your heart roho chafu na malaika wanapigana to when you have good fears na ukiwa na imani mzuri no i know bible utasema na jua attending night man me church kushiriki man me church Children of God, mtoto wa Mungu, remove this adultery heart. Ndio moyo wa kuzini. Devo miss Sunday so. Usikose ibada Jumapili. Ni amri ya Mungu. If you do not come to church on Sunday, usipokuja kanisani Jumapili, I would commend you. Na Mungu amekuamrisha. Remember say by keeping your Sabato itakasi. Then you by your right to Lord to stay. Utakuwa unavunja amri ya siku ya Bwana. You angel cannot protect you when you drive a car, when you walking on the Lord. Ndio maana unapotembea barabarani ama uendeshe gari malaika wako hato kulinda. Then you business job children cannot be prosper. Na biashara na hata kazi na watoto hawatafanikiwa. Watu ambao natii maneno ya Mungu vizuri. Protect them from time to time. Mungu atawalinda kila wakati. So that meet a man of God. Ndio maana kupata mtu wa Mungu. How teach the children of God? Wakufunza watoto wa Mungu. To resemble heart of God, resemble heart of Jesus, resemble heart of man of God, Abraham, Moses and Paul. Wakuweza kusaidia watu wafananishe na kupata moyo wa Mungu, moyo wa Yesu Kristo, watumishi wa Mungu kama vile Musa, Abraham na Paulo. So that you are so blessed to come to Manmin Church this morning. Ndio mbarikiwa sana asubuhi ya leo kuja Manmin Church ya Nairobi. If you are clap your hand by the way. Kwa ishara kwa mikono. Asante. Asante sana. We should know that even though we don't physical fight as soldier all appear in our daily life are related to the battle in the spiritual realm. Na tujue kila wakati hata kama tutapigana vita vya kimwili kama maaskari lakini mkumbuke mambo yote ya maisha yetu kila siku inahusiana na vita ambavyo vinaendelea vita vya kiroho. A common example is when believers are severely persecuted at home or at work place mfano mzuri ni wakati muumini mkristo anapitia mateso iwe ni kwenye family yake ama kazini anapofanya kazi from a physical perspective the family members or work mate themselves are the t1 who persecute them katika mfano huu tukaiangalia kwa mtazamo wa kimwili kikawaida na fikra za kibinadamu utapata ni kwamba wale wa family ama mfanyikazi kule kwenye kampuni ndio anakutesa but spiritually lakini kiroho it is the evil spirit inciting them to trouble to believers <laughs> inakuwa ni roho wachafu ndio wanawasingizia waweze kusumbua waumini wa Kristo when the persecuted ones please god and get empowered by god wanaoteswa wanapopendeza bwana na kupokea nguvu kutoka kwa mungu with help from heavenly angel and the host they cause the evil spirit to lose strength utapata kwamba Majeshi ya binguni na malaika watapokea nguvu na kisha watasababisha roho wachafu apoteze nguvu zao as a result na matokeo yake the persecutors keep oh. wale ambao wana, wanatesa waumini watachoka we have experienced this many times through overseas crusade conducted by our shepherd bishop dr Jero D. Na tumeshuhudia jambo kama hili mara mingi kupitia mikutano kadhaa ambayo askofu daktari Jero Kli ameweza kutenda kote duniani. People our shepherd visit a country where we he would conduct a crusade many times the enemy devil severely interfered na kwa wakati mwingi kabla askofu, askofu kufika kwenye taifa ambalo angeweza kufanya mkutano mkubwa mara mingi mingi adui alijaribu kusumbua kazi yake na kuyaribu but once 
our shepherd got over the plain and stepped on the land. Lakini wakati askofu alitoka kwenye ndege na kakanyaga kwenye nchi ile in case of India uh, Chennai city. Sana sana India mji wa Chennai. When he had a big place 3 million attended in the Chennai beach. Wakati alifanya mkutano mkubwa kwenye beach ya Chennai kule watu milioni 3 walikusanyika pamoja. So interfering forces weakened so much. Na nguvu za adui wakusumbua walidhofika sana. The governor to not allow anyone to receive Jesus as for if bishop preach Jesus Christ he will put him in the prison. Serikali ilikuwa imeshatangaza kwamba hawaruhusu yeyote kuhubiri Kristo kusaidia watu kumwamini na kwamba askofu akahubiri mambo ya Kristo atawekwa gerezani. Kobono announced in the city. Serikali walitangaza mjini kote. The chairman of the organization of the crusade organization please do not preach Jesus Christ so much. Na mwenyekiti wa kuandaa mkutano huu crusade kule India aliweza kumsi askofu tafadhali endelee na mkutano huu my bishop devo warrior lakini askofu hakuwa na wasiwasi through crusade kupitia crusade hii many people receive jesus watu wengi walimpokea Yesu kama mkombozi the next day siku iliyofuata even the policemen hata polisi they want to how to arrest the people walitaka ku kushika watu impossible for Haiku, them arrest the people haikuwezekana kukamata watu convicted watu ambao walishiriki they would read this blessing from the message from bishop jerome nataka kutoa kwa askofu jerome lee they could see waliona power was come up them nguvu za mungu ziliwashukia kupitia maombi ya askofu so many hundred thousand people healed give testimony Ma on the pulpit maelfu ya mia ya watu waliweza kutoa ushuhuda wakaponywa kutukuza mungu so last day last na, crusade na crusade ya mwisho 3 million attended siku ya mwisho milioni 3 walikusanyika clap your hands tukuza mungu kwa makofi as a worshiper overcame the fierce spiritual battle with faith and prayer the evil spirit lost their strength na kupitia maombi na imani yake askofu aliweza kushinda vita hivi vikali vya kiroho na kisha roho wachafu wakapoteza vita hivi as the camp of the enemy devil got destroyed our shepherd won victory and glorified god na kama vile kambi ya adui ibilisi ileza kuharibiwa kabisa mchungaji wetu alimtukuza bwana mungu kwa ukuu na kashinda also when i had a crusade in india south sudan juba and anada no, Lumbe. Wakati nilifanya crusade mimi kule India na South Sudan, Rumbek na Juba. In the Rumbek city around 50,000 together is a great great number. Na Rumbek watu wa 1,500 wakikusanyika ni namba kubwa sana. Not the biggest city. Si mji mkubwa sana. Then after preaching, baada ya maubiri, play on the pulpit, nikaomba kwenye madhabahu. Then in the center, katikati, wow 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 wow. Watu wakaanza kelele. There was one blind man. Ukawa na kipofu moja. Very well known in the Rumbek city. Anajulikana sana kule Rumbek. He is from sight. Aliona. So they tell wow. Na watu wakawa na kelele. They brought this blind man come to the on the pulpit. Wakamleta huyu kipofu kwenye madhabahu juu. And give testimony. Akatoa ushuhuda. The news na habari come to the governor. Zilifika kwa governor. Kabono come to me. Governor can you invite me? Akanikaribisha. Attend the crusade. Akashiriki crusade. Delta. Akapiga magoti mwenyewe. Pray for me. Tafadhali niombe. From that time. Kuanzia hapo. He love me or invite me. Alinipenda na akapenda nialike. Then he become a deputy speaker of the parliament in the Juba. Na baada ya maombi yangu akawa deputy speaker wa bunge la kule Sudan. He invite me. Akanikaribisha. To have a seminar for the minister member parliament in the parliament. Aka organize seminar ya mawaziri na wabunge ndani ya bunge. Paulo God. Nguvu za Mungu ndio hizo. We are in the spiritual battle mujue tuko kwenye vita vya kiroho how to love your god na wewe kupenda mungu wako how to see your god na kumwamini mungu wako god will control the whole world mungu anatawala dunia yote haleluya <laughs> yeah 
This was why God commanded circumcision to Israel that had crossed Jordan. Na ndio maana Mungu akaagiza wa Israeli ambao walishavuka mto wa Yordani waweze kufanya tohara. Physically circumcision is merely cutting of a piece of skin but spiritually it signifies removing of the foreskin of one's heart. Kimwili kikawaida tohara inamaanisha kuondoa ngozi ya nje tu lakini kiroho inamaanisha kuondoa ngozi za nje za mioyo yetu. The Bible say in Jeremiah chapter 4 verse 4 circumcise yourself to the Lord and remove the foreskin of your heart men of Joshua and the inhabitant of Jerusalem. Biblia imetuambia kwenye Yeremia 4 mstari wa 4 jitahirini katika Bwana tahirini mioyo yenu enyi wanaume wa Yuda na watu wa Yerusalemu. Here to remove the foreskin of your heart is to circumcise your heart. Na hapa ikisema kuondoa ngozi ya nje ya mioyo yetu inamaanisha kufanya tohara ya moyo kutakasa moyo. Then it is to remove sin and evil and purify yourself by keeping God's commandment. Yaani inamaanisha kuondoa dhambi na kila uovu na kujisafisha mwenyewe kwa kutunza amri za Mungu. Even though we commit sin is a sin, hata tukatenda dhambi, the great sin we do not receive Jesus as a personal savior. Unaweza ukatenda dhambi kadhaa lakini dhambi kubwa zaidi ya zote ni kutomkubali Yesu kama mwokozi. We do not know God is a father our creator. Usipojua Mungu ni baba yetu na muumba wetu. It's a great sin. Ndio dhambi kubwa zaidi. But human being lakini binadamu after receiving Jesus personal savior. Baada ya kumpokea Yesu kama mwokozi hold the lie na ukadanganya when you repent ukatubu you can enter the kingdom of god utasamehewa uingie katika ufalme wa mungu but if you do not receive as a personal savior jesus died on the cross for you and my sin lakini yakukosa kumkubali yesu kama mkombozi na kujua ya kwamba alikufa msalabani juu ya dhambi zetu you do not know god god son jesus god son holy spirit then you cannot enter the kingdom of god na usipojua kuhusu mungu yesu mwana wa mungu na roho mtakatifu katifu hautaweza kuingia katika ufalme wa Mungu so the god want all you to be a witness ndio maana Mungu anataka nyinyi nyote muwe mashahidi so that from time i give the message about first peter chapter 3 verse 15 and 16 ndio maana kila wakati nimekuwa nikirudia ujumbe kwenye petro wa kwanza 3:15:16 why i love to repeat this message in the morning to the pastor workers in the evening, Daniel prayer meeting, also today to the whole congregation. Na muna nipende kurudia, rudia ujumbe huu wa Petro wa kwanza tatu kuminatano kuminasita kwa wachungaji wetu kila subui na washirika kanisani kila maumbi jioni na hata leo hii. If I emphasize one more, more time, more time, we need this message, memorize this message you meet our Lord Jesus in the air. Nika sisitiza na kusisitiza kurudia rudia hivi ujua ya kwamba tunaitaji sana ujumbe huu mbaka tutakapo mlaki buwana angani. First Peter. Petro wa kwanza. Chapter 3. Tatu. 15, 16. Kumina tano na kumina sita. I don't, I know, I don't know how many remember this message when I repeated last Sunday as a review. Sijiwa ngapi muna ikumbuka wakati nilirudia kwenye ibada jumapili liopita. One more time. Maratena. Today we are talking about circumcise our heart. Leo hitu naongia kusu tohara ya moyo. Today we are talking about how to be sanctified, to be holy, then God give you power how to give the power to the Israel people destroy the Jericho castle. Tunaongea leo hii kuhusu kutakasa mioyo yetu kufanya tohara ya moyo ndio kwamba tupokee nguvu maishani kama vile wa Israeli walipokea nguvu ya kubomoa ukuta wa Jericho. The Bible say, Biblia inasema, "Devil Christ as Lord in our heart." and be sanctified. Muheshimu ni Kristo kama buwana mioeni mwenyu kisha mutakazike. We have to remember, memorize this message. Tukumbuke na tukumbuke sana ujumbe huu. Give you Christ, Christ Messiah as the Lord in your heart. Muheshimu ni Kristo, Kristo Masihi kama buwana mioeni mwenyu. And be sanctified. Na mutakazike. 
What does it mean? Inamanisha nini? You remember that the Lord is your master. Ukumbuke ya kwamba huyu Yesu ni bwana wako. Remember that the Lord is your master. Ukumbuke huyu bwana ni bwana wako kweli. You are not master. Una bwana wako. The Lord is master of you. Bwana ndio bwana kweli kwako. And then alafu Bible say Biblia kasema always be prepared to give an answer to anyone who ask you to give the reason for the hope you have with gentleness with fear with a clear conscience conscience ikatuambia siku zote tuwe tayari kutoa jibu kwa yeyote atakayekuuliza kuhusu sababu ya tumaini ambalo uko nalo na ukatoa sababu ile utoe kwa moyo kwa 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 utoe kwa heshima na utoe kwa upole na kwa dhamiri safi Paul give this message Ni Paulo Petro ah, alisema Peter give this message Ni Petro alisema When Peter experienced many things in this world in the spiritual battle Wakati Petro alinena mengi huko duniani kuhusu vita vya kiroho Always people prepared to give an answer to everyone who ask you to give the reason for the hope you have with gentleness with fear with clear conscience 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 mm. Akatuambia siku zote muwe tayari kutoa jibu kwa yeyote atakayewauliza kuhusu sababu ya tumaini ambalo liko ndani yenu na mkatoa sababu mtoe kwa upole kwa heshima na kwa dhamiri safi Then you remember na ukumbuke if the Jesus people would take up into heaven give the message to his disciples Hata Yesu kabla ya kunyakuliwa juu mbinguni akanena na wanafunzi wake Tunatribu Jerusalem Musiondoke Yerusalemu Wait for the gift The Lord God Father promised Mungu je kipawa ambacho Bwana Mungu aliahidi You will reach power when the Holy Spirit come upon you Mtapokea nguvu atakapoajilia Roho Mtakatifu Then you will be witness in Jerusalem Judea Samaria and to the end of the world Nani mtakuwa mashahidi katika Judea Samaria Jerusalem na pande zote za dunia When you receive the Holy Spirit Ukapokea Roho Mtakatifu You will receive power Utapokea nguvu Then you can be witness Na utakuwa shahidi If you know have power Bila nguvu If you are servant Na mtumishi wa Mungu Hana nguvu I cannot be good witness Siwezi kuwa shahidi mwema Every church, na kila kanisa, all the servants of the Lord, they want to perform miracle and wonder. Nazimu atende mojiza na majabu. Nairo manmin church me. Nairo bi manmin church wa shirika. Not only me. Si mimi peke yangu. But all of you. Hata nyenye nyote. When you pray for the sick, they must be healed. Nazimu aponywe. Then you can be witness. Na utakuwa shahidi. Now Peter said. Na Peter kasema. Always. Siku zote. Be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope you have. Siku zote muwe tayari kutoa jibu kuhusu sababu ya tumaini ambalo uko nalo. You prepare testimony. Utairisha utatayarisha ushuhuda. How to give the reason to for the hope you have. Utoe sababu ya tumaini ambalo uko nalo. When you are healed, ukiponya, when you are Bible, na unajua Biblia. You Prepare this man teach your brothers and sisters in the law. Utarisha ujumbe ufunze ndugu zako katika Bwana. But when you preach this message, ukihubiri when you give testimony, na utoe ushuhuda wako. In Nairobi, hapa Nairobi, in Kenya, Kenya in Africa, Africa yote, all of the world. Na dunia nzima. Number one, kitu cha kwanza, with gentleness. Kwa upole. Number two, ya pili, with fear. Kwa heshima. Number three, ya tatu, with a clear conscience. Kwa dhamiri safi. With gentleness, kwa upole, with fear, kwa heshima, with a clear conscience, kwa dhamiri safi. What is the gentleness? Upole ndio nini? God want you gentle. Mungu anataka uwe mpole. A people proud of them. Lakini watu wako na kiburi. People become angry. Watu wanakasirika. Then when you become angry, ukakasirika. They do not want to listen from you. Hakuna mtu atataka atataka kukusikiza. When you become gentle, ukiwa mpole, they won't talk with you. Watataka kuongea na wewe. So what does the mean? This gentleness. Upole upole sasa unamaanisha nini? Gentleness mean the relationship between you and 
other people. Upole hapa unamaanisha uhusiano kati yako wewe na binadamu mwingine. The wish of fear. Na kwa hisima, what is the fear? Hisima hapa inamaanisha fear means the relationship between you and God. Hisima hapa ni uhusiano kati yako wewe na Mungu. You fear the Lord. Kum hesimu bwana. It means you respect the Lord God. Na kum hesimu bwana Mungu. What is a clear conscience? Na damiri safi nayo. Clear conscience. Kuna damiri safi. What does that mean? Ina manisha. Clear conscience means you yourself. Hapa damiri safi na manisha usiano wako kivya kwe we mnye we. The relationship between you yourself. Usiano kivya kwe we na we we mnye we. When people say, watu akisema, inside evil sort, outside talking well. Unapata ndani ni uovu lakini nje anatamka vizuri. Because they do not have a clear conscience. Kwa sababu hana dhamiri safi. But to say clear conscience. Lakini watu wa dhamiri safi. Inside outside talking are the same. Ndani na nje yote ni sawa. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you check your life, ukachunguza maisha yako. How many you cheat other people? Wangapi mnadanganya watu? You told them many many times. Ukadanganya mara mingi mimi. Me too. Hata mimi mwenyewe. People meeting my people. Kabla nipatane na askofu wangu. Sometimes you told the lie. Wakati mwingi nilidanganya. It's true. Ni ukweli. God want to you. Mungu anataka wewe. Have a clear conscience. Uwe na dhamiri safi. Then you will prepare the reason for the hope you have utatarisha sababu ya tumaini ambalo uko nalo ah it touch my heart imeguza moyo wangu when i read the bible nikisoma bible bible say biblia nasema first john chapter 3 verse 21 22 waraka wa kwanza wa yohana 3 mstari wa 21 22 beloved if our heart does not condemn us we have confidence before god wapendwa kama mioyo yetu haita tuhukumu tunao ujasiri mbele za mungu if our heart do not condemn us we have confidence before god kama mioyo yetu haita tuhukumu tunao ujasiri mbele za Mungu and whatever we ask we receive from him because we keep his commandment and do the thing that are pleasing in his sight lolote tuombano twalipokea kutoka kwake kwa sababu tumeziti amri zake na kutenda yale yanayompendeza said, signification is crucial to the receiving our spiritual and physical blessing na kama vile imetaja hapa kutakasika uko na uhusiano wa karibu sana na kupokea baraka zetu za kimwili na tena za kiroho ondo god's permission anything can happen instantly na mungu akiruhusu chochote kitatendeka mara moja but before that it is important that we first circumcise our heart and gain confidence by keeping the commandment so that god can walk lakini kabla ya hiyo ni ya muhimu sana ya kwamba sisi wenyewe kwanza tutakase mioyo yetu tuwe na ujasiri katika kutii amri za mungu ndio kwamba mungu aweze kutenda kazi now sasa after the circumcision of the israelite baada ya waisraeli kufanya tohara there was great tension between israel and Jericho Kulitokea wasiwasi mkubwa sana kati ya Israeli na Yeriko As the Bible say Kama vile Biblia nasema Now Jericho was tightly shut because of the son of Israel no one went out no one came in Basi malango ya Yeriko yalifungwa kwa udhabiti kwa ajili ya Waisraeli hakuna mtu yeyote aliyetoka au kuingia Jericho put itself on the highest alert Yeriko wakajilinda sana wakiwa wana tahadhari Looks like they felt no room for Israel's attack. Na inakaka na kwamba hawakuacha nafasi yote ya Waisraeli kuwapiga. But God had already dispatched his heavenly host and his captain. Lakini Mungu tayari alikuwa ameshaachilia majeshi wake kutoka mbinguni. And he promised Joshua saying in Joshua 
chapter 6 verse 2 na kisha mungu akaagiza ama akamwahadi Yoshua akisema kwenye Yoshua 6 mstari wa 2 see i have delivered Jericho into your hand along with his king and his fighting men tazama nimeitia Yeriko mikononi mwako pamoja na mfalme wake na watu wake wa vita god also told them detailed strategy for their victory na tena mungu akazidi kuelezea kwa undani zaidi mikakati ambayo watafuata ndio kwamba wapokee ushindi so that i have to give the main context from now na sasa nitaanza ujumbe wa leo hapa but Today I give many other messages. Lakini ni mubiri ma ujumbe mui. I cannot preach the main context from now. Na sasa nanza ujumbe wa leo hapa. The message will be delivered next Sunday. Na next Sunday to tendele apia. But today message. Ujumbe wa leo. Even though give small small message. Ata ni kubiri ndo gondogo. It will help you. Ita kusaidia. To be true children. Uwe mtoto akweli wa mungu. To be a spiritual warrior. Uwe suja wa kiroho. If you are blessed. Kamu me barikiwa. Grab your hand. Hallelujah. Would you please stand up? Tafadali to see mommy. Hallelujah, Almighty Father God of love. Please lay your hands on all believers who are receiving this prayer now. Show your works to transcend space and time on those who are receiving this prayer around the world. Give them faith and drive away negative thoughts and doubts and drive away all tests and trials. From head to toe, all entrails, joints, nerves, tissues and cells, whatever the sick part may be, burn them with the fire of the Holy Spirit and with the original light. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command the enemy devil and Satan, all diseases, germs and viruses and infirmities, go away. May the light come. Drive away all endemic diseases such as malaria. All contagious diseases such as cold, flu and fever, go away. Protect them from all kinds of germs and viruses. Heal them of after effects of all kinds of accidents and fix their broken bones. Restore them from burns and let the heat and burning sensation go away and let there be no skull left. Be cleansed from all kinds of drug addictions, poisoning and substance abuse. Give them the blessing of conception. May you receive the blessing of conception. In the name of Jesus Christ I command the enemy devil and Satan, the ruler of the air and evil forces of darkness, go away. And their servants also go away. Father God, give them strength to cry out in prayer and to cast off sin and to become sanctified. As their soul prosper, let all things go well with them, let their family be evangelized. Protect them from all kinds of accidents and disasters throughout this week and bless them to lead a prosperous life without any problems. With the firewall of the Holy Spirit, with the heavenly hosts and angels and with your blazing eyes, protect all your children, their family, workplace and business. Give students wisdom and understanding and give them fervent passion to study hard. Please keep their hearts and minds from the worldly things and let them love Father God all the more fervently. Whether your children eat or drink or whatever they may do, let them do it all for the glory of Father God. Let them say, I met God, I experienced God, I received answers and blessings. Let them testify with their lips like this. Father God, thank you. Be glorified alone. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. GCN.